great day has arrived. Dredge number one is completed and ready for work. The official opening is an occasion for celebration and festivities. The floating monster's arrival from civilization thrills the Kanaka as much as the white man, and he throws himself into his task with zest. You will understand how the native has benefited by these activities. A long time will elapse before he shakes off the shackles of barbarism, but his contact with the environment of the white man must inevitably hasten his progress along the path that leads to civilization. Well, I do feel that uh, non-violent direct action uh, is, uh, is a most powerful approach. It's an international criminal conspiracy. Good afternoon. I'm Annette Falk with a 1500 CKAY information update. With five more arrests in the Walburn Valley today, a Fletcher Challenge spokesman says the company is running out of patience. idea what had been going on and, and I saw Mount Paxton and what they had done to it and I was stunned because you know it just stands out it's so visual and it's from ocean straight up to this 2800 feet up I think and then they, they had logged it up and over the other side and I just I could feel it in my chest just looking at it it just my whole chest hurt it just started to ache I felt I was just, could not believe what, it was like an atrocity that had been done. And I just knew then that they were going to be sorry. How many people will they arrest before McMillan votes down will reckon with public concerns? This is an atrocity! This is a violation of Aboriginal rights! I will not go to jail! Jesus Christ. Oh. It really is irreplaceable. There's, there's nothing like it. Some of these trees started growing when, when Columbus landed, for Christ's sake, you know. And you can't in there just pulping these for toilet paper. It's ridiculous. We could also knock onto the doors of the admin building, the main entrance, and stop people going in there. It's theoretically possible that some people might like to try, if all else fails, going over that fence uh, and actually climbing down a tree. Soft, strong, and long. And lots, and lots, and lots. Hendrix. The 
arrests came as protesters burst through police lines outside the Scott Mill at Northfleet near Gravesend. The company had obtained a court order posted outside the plant preventing the campaigners from entering the factory, but it was ripped down. The protest was part of an international day of action against the destruction of temperate rainforest in Canada. Certainly this sort of group, uh, I don't think any, does anything for the cause of conservation. They've been threatening illegal protests, they've been threatening to uh, shut down our mill. It's an international criminal conspiracy. They are going to ram you. We draw the line is we don't injure or kill people, but we have no hesitation about damaging property which is being used illegally to destroy the environment, to destroy wildlife. We have absolutely no hesitation there. In 1986, Sea Shepherd agents sank two Icelandic whalers, half the country's fleet. We're here to uh, say things people don't like, to do things people don't want to be seen done, so we don't really measure our support uh, by how happy we make people feel with our actions. The more uh, we can annoy people, the more we can make issues controversial, I think that's where we measure our effectiveness. We have to be very careful to make sure that that style of anti-environmental action does not actually get misrepresented as something which the environment movement supports. We decry it. We deny it. It has no place in a democracy which actually relies and must rely on public demanding that politicians deliver the goods. Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth have got their position, but they seem to be going more like the big multinational corporations, the way they organise themselves and everything. Like I used to work in um, in shops as a salesman, and we used to get like, directives from head office. We'd have a new promotion, and we never really got any say in it. And it seems like it's the same with Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth to me now that you know, it all comes down from head office and then out go the troops. The organisation and things is in danger of becoming just like the people that they're opposing. One of WWF's greatest achievements has been to put complex environmental issues near the top of the international agenda. In strong economy. WWF's intensive lobbying and policy work is paying off. We're coming into the era when we no longer trust the system and the system has failed and there's no way you can beat the system within it. All my life I've been a very sort of uh, respectable middle class citizen. I've just seen what we've said ignored or, or distorted more to the point and I've seen and heard the ministers tell the lies. It's we conservatives who are not merely friends of the earth. We are its guardians and trustees for generations to come. We've all tried going through the official channels and no good comes of it, so then you've really got to take stock and actually say, no, I'm going to try and do something personally to stop this rather than relying on the government or something like that. Non-violent direct action uh, is, uh, is a most powerful approach. At Golden Hill, Bristol, protesters occupied the site after the planning process gave them a supermarket they didn't want. On behalf of the sheriff to enforce the High Court order and require you to move. To see 140, 150 police here when we've got local residents, ordinary people, just protesting against something to protect their community, it's quite astonishing never really seen anything like it. I'm sure there's a really large number of people in this country who actually feel the same way about these things that we do, who, who have the same emotion about it, but they don't, they don't have an outlet for their emotion. You know, they, they need to come out and do some, do some direct action, get out on the streets and shout about it. Six hours this morning, southern, six hours this morning, southern Britain. Six hours this morning. 
dawn and the vessel Mayfair slips quietly into Sydney, loaded with timber from Malaysia. Waiting, this group out to stop her berthing. They paddled down the harbour in kayaks and surrounded the ship as it tried to tie up at Darling Harbour. That's when it got dangerous. Police, powerless to stop them, watched as the protesters became wedged between the ship and the wharf. Despite the danger, they wouldn't give in. Why are you doing I'm prepared to die for this. Still, they refused to budge. He's getting crushed and he's sinking! Clearing the paddlers didn't solve the Mayfair's problems. Wharfies threw their weight behind protesters by recommending a 24-hour ban on unloading the ship from first shift tomorrow. All these actions taking place today uh, will be uh, repeated or reported in history books later on because the rainforests uh, are a great uh, asset to the world. They cleanse the air and uh, we just uh, totally destroy them as uh, of no benefit to us. Australia, well, to stop using rainforest timber to put as much emphasis as possible on taking as much action as possible, getting involved with rainforest action groups and trying to um, basically stop consuming as much rainforest timber. We've got to reduce consumption. Groups like this can now be found throughout Britain. So, who fancies intercepting a huge freighter at six o'clock in the morning? It's 5 a.m. and the campaigner's dinghy cuts its way through the water at Tilbury Docks. Its mission to stop the docking and unloading of hardwood from the cargo ship MV Singer Willstream. One of the group then attaches himself to the dockside with a bicycle lock. Sometimes you have to break the law to uphold the law and we're talking about a higher moral law, which means preserving rainforests. Three more protesters chain themselves to the dock gates later on. Police have to use cutting gear to free them. I would just be there and cook, like, by chaining myself to a ladder on the side of the thing so the boat can't get into the port. And I'll be throwing away the key. And so I would just be there and staying there as long as I can to stop the can boat. Can you hold going. that up? That, this, yeah. is, this is a strong bike lock. Yeah, it's about as strong as you can get. I mean, they, still, they can still cut this, but it takes them a long time. The Port of London Authority condemned the protest as deplorable and dangerous. Hanno O'Sullivan, Coast to Coast, Tilbury Docks. Right now, let's have a look at tonight's national news headlines. Earlier on today, apparently, a woman rang the BBC and said she heard that there was a hurricane on the way. Well, if you're watching, don't worry, there isn't. Meanwhile, just outside Oxford, another protest was underway. Earth First had targeted a major tropical timber importer. You're restricting my breathing. No, I'm not. My hand is not on your neck. <laughs> Wilson said 20 police officers were at the depot. He said... I'm absolutely delighted with today's events. I mean, initially we were caught a little bit off guard in that uh, people sort of turned up in a large number and, and actually took over the premises, which we were assured that wasn't going to happen. But having said that, no damage has been caused, no arrests have been made, no confrontations whatsoever. There's been a lot of useful dialogue, and it's a shame that more demonstrations can't take place like this. There's no, no future in mahogany. It's going to end one day. If not, if not today, then it's going to finish in five years' time. What happens then? <laughs> because they can't earn a profit while they're alive. They don't want to know, know about it for the future, yeah. do they? Earth First won the day. They closed the plant. The workers were sent home on full pay. Do you have any sympathy with what the demonstrators no, are trying to do? No, none whatsoever. We'd like them to come out twice a week. Like because actually the management then would actually realise what actually is going on in Brazil. We just want the message to be got across to the public and this is actually the only way we have of doing it. It's really powerful, it's, it's a message that goes out, we do big banners, we, we make noise, we stop places from working and we, we're just visual all the time. The demonstrate a grim warning, the climate, out. the protest, damage to the Our occupation, the demonstrate, pro protesters, the people who lift up a ship, others blocked of mahogany, direct action.
This is BBC Home Service from London. Twyford Down is one of the most beautiful corners of England. Legendary last resting place of King Arthur, these rolling hills are rich in rare wildlife and archaeological remains dating back more than 4,000 years. Please leave the site now. But today bulldozers are digging a massive trench 400 feet wide and 100 feet deep through the heart of this ancient down. This place, which inspired Keats to write of the season of mists and mellow fruitfulness, will soon, if the government has its way, be sacrificed to the onward march of the M3. Well, we'll just defend it as best we can, you know, legally and, um, and non-violently, in a, in a humorous way, you know, as well, you know, try and keep this um, light. You can't build roads, you can't, can't um, make uh, scrambled eggs without breaking eggs. And uh, that's the, uh, the, the same position with building roads. At the motorway site, security guards and police dogs barred the way of the protesters. But by sheer weight of numbers, fences were broken down and the demonstrators surged in. This is going to really inspire people. And, you know, the money and the time and the aggro that they've got, they wish that they'd never bothered. I think they do wish that they'd never bothered. And they're going to come across us all the time. You know, we'll really be something to be reckoned with and we'll be admired for what we've been doing and what we're going to do. We're strong people, the Dungas tribe. It will be a more than doubling in the amount of traffic nationwide by the year 2025. Now, I've done a little calculation of the amount of space that would be required to park an extra 27 million motor vehicles. It turns out that it would be a queue of parked cars 100,000 miles long, or a new motorway from London to Edinburgh 257 lanes wide. There are plans to widen the M1, M2, M3, M4, M11, M23, M40, the A1, M1, A2, M2, and of course, the M25. I think we should start from a position that we're not going to compromise, rather than like if you get groups to object to a road building scheme, they straight away come up with an alternative. It's about time that a group turned around and said, no alternative. The alternative is no more cars, cut the cars down. <laughs> going to get bigger. The car culture is growing constantly. Protest is coming together all throughout Europe. This is just the first stage.
a royal pain in the rear end to people today, but I think we make great ancestors because from a vantage point of hundreds of years in the future, this will be the generation which destroyed the planet for the future. And the only people who are going to be respected are those people who have actually done something to salvage this planet for the future. Violent direct action uh, is uh, is a most powerful approach. Your time.